Hi, this is Zach here with the weekend edition of the Bulletin Board Heroes. It is uh, Sunday the 15th of October, starting off with the FTSE 100, which is still shy of the top of that uh, falling February trend channel. That's around 77.25. We had a three, four day failure at the uh, 200 day moving average. That's currently 76.40. And uh, below that, we have the risk of a test of the rising 50 day line 75.10. But uh, market sort of in the middle in betwixt and between at the moment and uh, unless we're outside the 200 day band or the 50 day moving average not really much to say rsi at 54 which is on the right side of neutral so that does give us a slight bias to the upside if we break 77.25 then looking for the top of that rising trend channel from august as high as 78.45 but to the moment that seems still seems a way away moving on to the dax and uh, here there was an attempt to rally. We had an uh, unfold gap to the upside at the end of last week, but uh, all that good work rather ruined with the failure at the 50 and 200 day moving averages at 15,600, both trapped through the late September peak as well. So that means we're back in the brace position in terms of seeing whether this market will find support at the May support uh, trend line there, 15,000 or so, and uh, possibly even roll over if it goes back below the 15,000 area. We could be looking at... Uh, March support around 14,400, which would not be very nice. RSI failure at neutral 50 as well. So uh, it's a double sell signal there for the DAX. And as I, I think I've said before, with that extended topping formation that we've had there since the uh, basically spring for uh, the DAX, not looking good. We just need to get back above that 15,600 area. And the 200 day moving average, moving along to the Dow and uh, here, also another failure in the 200-day line zone, 33,800, and uh, we failed there on se several occasions now since the end of last month. That means that we're looking, I think, to uh, test the floor of the rising trend channel from this time last year, just shy of 33,000. I think we can get away with a bounce off that and then head higher. That would be quite a result for the last part of the year. Moving on to Bitcoin, which has also been looking a bit shaky uh, over the last week. Just hanging on to that uptrend line there from back in January, 26,600. We don't want to see this market on the wrong side of the 50-day uh, line, 26,300, and certainly not below 26,000. Worst case scenario at the moment is that we have to retest the 25,000 area. We had an RSI uptrend line break last week, but at least the uh, breakdown there leaves the market just in the uh, upper 40s, which is not too bad yet. If you're confused by the whole thing here, then the easiest thing would be to wait for a proper clearance of the 200-day moving average at 28,000. End of day or end of week close above that, then giving us the hope that the year will end in a flourish on uh, 30,000 plus for this market. Moving on to the stocks, and uh, I noticed a slight bun fight on uh, Twitter uh, during the week. And what was interesting there, I think, is the uh, issue of that little low that we had there back in July when the shares went uh, below the 90 pence level. What was interesting then, and uh, probably the reason that uh, I too wasn't uh, uh, too, well, I was slightly concerned the market was going to break down, but not too concerned, is because the, R the price went lower, but the RSI didn't go lower than when the shares were higher. That's called uh, bullish divergence. And then we bounced there, and that was effectively the low of the whole move so that's why i look at bullish divergence and the rsi trace very carefully to try and avoid false breaks on the current situation though we've got the rsi being, having come back from very overbought so the shares peaked here on a vector 166 currently we're hoping that the shares will find support at or above the old peak there from april 147 and a half Above 170, 47.5, and a half, we're looking for a break of that resistance line there from March. So it's 166. And the big prize may be by the end of the year, if we stay above the 150 zone, would be to head as high as £2.10. So uh, let's see if we can do that. The other positive at the moment, the reason I look at multiple indicators is, is that uh, we've got both the 50 and 200 day moving averages rising. They're heading into a golden cross, which could probably be delivered by the end of this month. The run-up to a golden cross tends to be the strongest part in the cycle. And so far, with that rally up from the uh, £1.20 area, that has come true. So looking like a VACTA can deliver the goods, especially if we stay above, as I said, 150. 
Moving on to a less active and less controversial situation, Braveheart here. We've got a rising trend channel there from April. Floor of the channel there around nine and a quarter pence above that. We're looking for 18 pence as soon as the end of next month. Uh, the final icing on the cake would be an end of day close through the 50 day moving average around uh, 11.9 pence. We've already had a gap close by signal. There was a gap down there at the end of last month. Or actually, yes, the end, end of last month. And uh, we filled that during the week. So, uh, Key here is staying above the 200-day uh, line and then breaking that 50-day average as soon as possible. On to Capital Metals, which was uh, something of a triumph, both in terms of the interview and then the uh, share price as well. I think when I released the interview on Friday, the shares were down around 4.7%. Managed to close up 15% nearly, and uh, they were much, much higher at one point as well. Uh, the view here on a charting basis is above uh, 3.9 pence. We're looking for as high as six and three quarter pence by the end of next month but the key here holding above that four pence area 50 and 200 day lines now both rising so that suggests we're into a, the run-up for a golden cross and uh, hopefully that will be uh, on its way by the end of next month as the previous call there was on a vector moving on to the aquas market which is uh, obviously the new nasdaq here you can see that uh, EDX has suffered, well, has delivered a very strong week. I think the shares are up uh, over 80% this week. Uh, unfilled gap to the upside through the uh, falling trend channel there from back in November last year. Cleared through the 200-day uh, line like a blowtorch through butter, and we made further progress as well through the May resistance. 4.2 pence above 4.2, looking for 7.5 pence by the end of next month. But uh, that uh, bear trap, gap reversal for the beginning of october really working well there on the edx chart returning to uh, helium one where i'm still waiting for the uh, helium to uh, uh, arrive and so i suppose everybody else is too looking more encouraging here we bounced off the old july support there around four and a half pence above that looking for i suppose the last major resistance and the 200 day line at 6.6 .6 pence and uh, hopefully we'll see that by the end of this month obviously that doesn't take into consideration any of the fundamentals so let's see if that actually works but so far we've had a bear trap from below the uh, july support there at four and a half which is a signal as is the way that um, on the lower low for october the rsi was actually slightly higher so that's bullish divergence and again that's the thing that stops you potentially selling or exiting at the low Maybe a, an evacta moment there for that stock. Moving on to Hummingbird, which uh, managed to rise 40% this week. And a uh, bit of a bear trap there, just below the initial support of the year. Or actually, we're just on it, I suppose. Uh, just maybe fractionally below. And uh, that's caused the shares to rise quite quickly. Uh, current situation is that we've got uh, the potential for a move back above 10 pence to lead us up to the 200-day line around 11 and a quarter over the next few sessions best case scenario probably up to 14 pence by the end of this month there is a line of resistance which uh, i've just spotted now which i suppose is running through the uh, 11 and a half pence area so that needs to be broken pretty quickly over the next few sessions upside valid while we're above the old support on the way down around eight and a quarter pence moving on to a stock which doesn't get much um, coverage here or anywhere else or a technology possibly because it's on uh, the aquas market but uh, try and be uh, as level and fair as possible on these things here we've got aura technology and uh, a very well very consistent rise for the shares since uh, back in july top of the channel there i'm guessing is up to 16 pence which i'm looking for by the end of uh, next month and what's interesting here is that we've only got out of all the days that we've had this stock on the market but he had one red candle so that is about as strong as you can get the consolidation here either sideways or up so that is pretty impressive and uh, upside valid 16 pence valid while we're above uh, the eight pence level which is the 50 day moving average stock which i've covered for a long time is on the market and uh, here looks like we've got a rising trend channel base we've got a rising 50 day line 
just waiting for the 200-day uh, line around 64 pence to start ticking higher, and that should be enough to give us a target towards 90 pence as soon as the end of next month. Uh, support there looks pretty solid in the 60 pence area. It's above 60, looking for 90 over the near term on uh, the market. Quad rise is next, and uh, the uh, picture here for QED is that... Uh, you can see that uh, the stock is uh, rebounding within a falling wedge. Just want to see the, the uh, level broken around uh, 0.85 above 0.85, looking for 1.3 in the 200-day moving average. And that could happen as soon as the end of next month after the latest bear trap, but from below 0.7 pence. Bullish divergence again. Again, that helps us avoid getting uh, sucked out at the low. And that's why I use that particular indicator. Sarabi is the next contender, and uh, I have to say it's performed rather better than even uh, was expected. We broke uh, falling wedge there around 24 pence uh, last month, and we've had an, uh, two unfilled gaps to the upside. Initial target here was uh, up to 37 or 38 pence, but we can now upgrade that to uh, 43 pence by the end of next month, while we hold above the latest gap around 31 pence. A uh, stock which is uh, relatively obscure, but here it is, Sunox, another one from the uh, Aquas market. It's really uh, being friendly to Aquas at the moment. Rising trend channel there from uh, back in uh, October last year. Probably say it's actually a bit slightly steeper than I've drawn, so up to uh, the uh, 42 pence level while we hold above the uh, recent support or actually recent resistance around the 20, 21 pence area. So above 21, looking for 42 on uh, Sunox by the end of next month. On to the last three. First one is Tomco, which has uh, not been the greatest experience, I presume, for the longs. But uh, here we had uh, an unfilled gap to the upside and bullish divergence there as well. And that suggests that we put in the low, at least while we're above the uh, 0.05 pence level, above 0.05, looking for up to 0.16 by the end of the year. The obviously uh, people who are cautious might want to wait for the 50-day moving average around 0 0.07 to break before assuming the best is yet to come there for the shares. On to Upland, uh, which has had a stellar week as well. Uh, here we have that uh, extended U-shaped uh, bull flag and uh, breaking that 2.9 pence level. I was saying that uh, you can see the shares up as high as 4.5 pence by the end of next month. Might be a bit earlier actually given the way things are going uh, especially if we can hold above well above that three pence level 50 and 200 day moving averages both rising and we bounced off rsi 50 double bounce there at the beginning of the month so all looking good mid move consolidation over and ready for a new move to the upside zephyr is the final contender today and uh, here rather a horrible experience in the recent past but uh, we've had a Nice rebound, higher low there for uh, October versus September, marginally higher low. And uh, we're all we're back above the July support there, around uh, 2.8 pence, looking for 4 pence by the end of next month, and hopefully a bit sooner than that. That's it from me today. More updates tomorrow.